Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Sandy Springs, Georgia, it's time for Sandy Springs Business Radio. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here with Rachel Simon, another episode of Sandy Springs Business Radio. And this episode is brought to you by Connect the Dots Digital. When you're ready to leverage LinkedIn to meet your business goals, go to Connect the Dots dot digital. Rachel, welcome. Hi, Lee. How are you? I am doing great. I am so excited about this show. We've got a great group here today. Yeah, we've got two guests. It's our first time with two guests, so super excited for that. It's going to be a fun <laughs> But that was good. You managed it by being of the same firm. There you go. Yes, exactly. Baby steps. Yes. So we are uh, really happy to welcome Jason Dean and Dave Jackson from Old Castle APG. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks Absolutely. We're, yeah, we're real excited to be here. Thank you so much. So let's dive right in. Tell us a little bit about yourself and um, Old Castle APG. Okay. Um, once again, my name is Jason Dean. I'm the SVP of Pro Sales for Old Castle APG, and I've kind of had an untraditional path to get here today. Early in my career, you know, I, I was coming out of high school. I went to high school in, in Maysville, Kentucky, uh, which is rural Kentucky. I wanted to go into law enforcement, so um, I did a stint in the U.S. Coast Guard and then went to college using the GI Bill, which is always a great thing, and studied criminology, corrections in there. And then when I got out, I was trying to really decide what I wanted to do with my life in law enforcement. My uncle had a, a brick and block company here in Atlanta, Georgia. And he said, hey, while you're thinking about your next step, why don't you come down and sell for me for a short period of time? And then um, you can see where your career takes you. Well, that was 30 years ago. Um, started my career in 94. And um, it, it's, been a, it's been a really good ride. Once you get sucked into this industry, you just can't get out of it. It's been a great career. It's not over yet. And the thing probably the most exciting about working with Old Castle um, APG is, you know, we've got the same core values, integrity, creative, community are three big ones. But the respect for our employees is probably number one, regardless of their background and beliefs. So um, great working environment, great company and happy to be here. Awesome. Well, Absolutely. tell us a little bit about yourself, Dave. Yeah, Dave Jackson. I come from the agency world. So most of my career has been in marketing. And actually before that, I tell Jason, and actually that's my story, I've had two jobs. I've either worked in hardware or I've done advertising. So working at Old Castle now for a little over five years is kind of a beautiful synthesis of, of the stuff that I've uh, done throughout my career. So uh, I run branding for a couple of our brands at Old Castle APG, working really closely with Jason and the sales team most notably being Sacrete, which is uh, the bagged concrete brand. The original bagged concrete brand is important to note. Yep. And I think we're going to spend some time talking about that today. Yeah. So um, first of all, I love non-traditional paths because it's always great to tell that story of like, how did you end up doing this? Um, those are always fun. So yeah, tell us a little bit about specifically what Old Castle APG does, who your customers are, um, because it may be a brand that our listeners are not familiar with. Sure. So, so we're part of CRH um, and Old Castle. We're a leading product manufacturer in North America and probably one of the biggest companies you've never heard of. Um, we, we're a family of brands and kind of our mantra right now is live well outside, right? So we play in a lot of spaces, um, including pool finishes, hands, landscape products, masonry, fencing and railing, composite decking, soils and mulches, and then once again, of course, our Sacrete brand, which we're really proud of from um, originated in 1936, um, as, as Dave mentioned. So chances are somebody who has an outdoor space has probably has products from your company. Absolutely. We, we drive. I, I get texts and emails all the time that there's always people going, hey, I saw your product here. I saw your product there. Um, my, actually, my daughter was in New York City a couple of weeks ago and sent me a picture of a pallet of of Sacrete in downtown New York City. So it's always fun to see our products um, kind of out there in the real world. Yeah. And it's a global company, correct? We are. We're a global company. Yes, ma'am. Um, very, very interesting. I mean, especially I've been begging for a, a deck at my house, so maybe someday I'll have some Old Castle APG materials mm -hmm. at my home. Well, you know who to call. You do. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. So tell us what what's sort of your differentiator in the market? Well, you know, I think we work in a very interesting space where, uh, you know, at the end of the day, 
building materials are a bit of a commodity product, uh, especially bag concrete. It's probably one of the worst offenders that bag concrete at the end of the day is sort of bag concrete. So what it really comes down to for us is how can we get closer to our end users and solve problems for them? Because it's really not all about the material at the end of the day. Concrete is concrete is concrete to a certain extent. What we spend a lot of time thinking about and driving, I think both from a a sales and marketing standpoint, is how can we make APG a customer or a business that our customers want to do business with? How can we make their lives easier? How can we help them make more money, uh, get the job done faster, easier, more efficiently? So I think that's really the thing that, from a conceptual standpoint, sets us apart, is that starting from the customer's point of view, uh, rather than our own. Yeah, and, and we focus on building relationships, right? Because we're in a relationship business. People buy from people. And um, we want our cu- customers to feel confident in doing business with Old Castle because providing the highest level of service and quality products is kind of our day-to-day goal. Now, from a B2B standpoint, obviously, you're working with people who are dealing with the end user at the end of the day. How does sales and marketing kind of work together? Do like are sales kind of the front line? You're learning what your customer needs are and you're trying to stay ahead of that and you're listening to their concerns and then you're sharing that with marketing or like who's who's kind of driving and who's kind of reacting to the information that's glean? Well, I'd say if you're doing it right, the information is flowing in both directions. You know, the sales team is definitely the front line. They've got the best read on who the customers are, what they need, what the competition is doing. That obviously has to be fed into marketing for us to spin, for lack of a better term. And then we, on the marketing side, I think have to be well-versed enough in the sales process to give the sales team information, assets, campaigns that solve that problem for them. Because sales guys are great at selling. And if we can help them tell a really good, compelling story, they're the both the best voice that we have out in the market. So do you have a mechanism that allows the sales folks to bubble up those stories? How, how does that come about? Yeah. So, so being a big company, we, we do a really good job of collaborating um, across the sales team and the marketing team. Uh, the good news is Dave and I have worked really close together for, um, you know, for a few years here at corporate and, we do. We we take stories from the field, and it's all about the customer. We listen to the customer and understand what their needs are. And it's not just the customer that's buying the material. We talk. We we've made a pivot the last few years, and we really focus on the end user. Okay, because that's really important um, information of what the end user actually needs to be successful in the field. And then we take that back to Dave, and Dave puts wonderful spins on and gives us good ideas of kind of how we can take what our customers need, the end user needs, and spin that into a story that that really resonates um, in the marketplace. And is the end user like a contractor? Like sure. Who, who yeah. would be other examples of who that end user might be? We'll have DIYers, yeah. um, you know, you, the weekend warrior that are doing their own projects, and then a lot of pro customers. You know, the, the pro customers, you, you really don't, you know, we always joke about where does Sacrete end up? We sell so much Sacrete. You know, one year we sold enough Sacrete to go around the world like three times um, if you take the bags end to end. And a lot of it ends up uh, in the fencing world. A lot of it ends up in repair products. So it, it's kind of it's kind of fun seeing. And we've seen some outlandish ways that our products are used. And we're like, I probably wouldn't do that. <laughs> but it's it's always been fun to kind of see kind of what's going on in the marketplace and how they're using our products. Now, you've been in the business for so many years. How have you seen it evolve uh, in terms of kind of learning from your customer? Have you seen some things like, oh, we didn't think of that, but the customer did, and now that's a whole, you know, big part of our business now? Yeah, we we have. Uh, you know, when, when the brand started in 1936, obviously I wasn't around in 1936, <laughs> but, um, you know, over over the past few years, we, we've kind of dug in and we've understood that, um, you know, even though it's just concrete and it's repair products, um, they're used in so many different ways. And we're, we're, we always try to find that niche use that we haven't thought of. Um, can, can do you remember any that stands out to you in the years that you've been doing this that something was like oh wow that was a, that's pretty clever there well you know i i think to your point about 
trying to really nail down who our customer is, what they care about, who they are as, as people has become more and more and more important because especially when we're selling commodities, it's how do we set ourselves apart? It's by being smarter, more relevant, more connected. And I think the, the one that jumps to mind immediately for me is the fact that we have just in the past year, two years, started doing a very uh, focused Hispanic marketing effort, uh, which frankly, and this is, you know, egg on my own face, something that we should have been doing for a long time. Um, statistically, but just based on census data, Hispanic customers and Hispanic pros are 30% of the construction market. And that's a low number, I would imagine. So the fact that we had been what man not not intentionally but unconsciously leaving them out of our our communications and and the story that we're trying to tell was a huge gap that we needed to fill and i think in the past year and a half two years the efforts that we've made to really make sure that we are speaking directly to that customer and making sure that they see you know feel heard and represented and respected is a a very big deal for us and just uh, i'd say that's a good sort of encapsulation of our ethos around making sure that we're delivering solutions for the actual customer. And, yeah. And, and based on some of that feedback we've gotten from our customers, we have created products maybe that are more fast setting, maybe that the extended working times. There are certain things that the concrete pro is looking for to be able to do their job efficiently and effectively. And I think we've, we've made some tweaks along the line um, of, of finding what that, what our customers are really needing and we're still listening to them. You know, we listen to them every day. Um, you know, we're very connected to that end user. And if we find that, um, if we find that we're missing a, uh, we've got a gap in our portfolio, then we quickly figure out a way to fill that gap. Yeah. So when you're, you know, trying to using your example of kind of getting tapping deeper into the Hispanic market, are you connecting with them at, conferences like in print like how where are you tapping into that audience so there's i'd say there's really two big ways and what's really interesting not just about that that customer in that market i'd say this is a general rule but the idea of getting involved in their in the community Mm -hmm. having a voice having a presence being um seen essentially you know but being in in organic authentic ways is what's really important and I'll say in particular for Hispanic Pro, social media has been a really strong entry point for us. Um, obviously, it works very well, general market, but there's what we've found is that that is really such a big point of community for the Hispanic Pro. They have a ton of pride in the work that they do, sharing that on social, building kind of that community, even though it's not in person is something that we've been able to tap into and I think make sure that we're you know authentically engaging with them through that direction. Yeah, which channels are sort of the most successful for you? The uh the, the big ones um yeah. TikTok and and Instagram are definitely the big two um working with um a couple of influencers over on that side and and uh, I I would say those are definitely the big two. So it's short form mobile driven uh a relatively young audience and just from a, a digital penetration standpoint you know the hispanic pro is very uh over indexes on sort of their interest in social media yeah linkedin is going is beta testing short form video again so just mm, interesting put that on your radar put that in the, <laughs> put that in the queue. there you go now, is there any advice for other firms that like, you've mentioned several times here how important it is to have that collaboration between sales and marketing? Is there any kind of advice or tips you can give an organization to create that level of communication and clarity of messaging when it comes to having a good working relationship between sales and marketing? You know, I would say that um, it, it goes hand in hand, right? If companies keep those a department so separated that they're not collaborating on a day-to-day basis, they're going to miss out. And and that's one thing that we've done really well is we brought the teams together on the marketing and so sales So that's side. from a cultural standpoint? You think cultural. the cultural of the organization is such that it, it kind of lends itself to this level of collaboration and, and teamwork, whereas some of them, as you mentioned, are silo. Some organizations may be culturally dysfunctional are siloed, and then it's they're, they're kind of adversarial rather than collaborative. 
Absolutely. And I think our culture um, is one thing. And then our, f- our focus on the customer, right? We, we focus on our customer and we focus on the end user. And I'll keep saying that because that's such a foundation of what we do and how we've been successful. Um, you know, brands don't stay around for almost 90 years um, if they don't have that. And I think you're right. It is that that culture. And that's something that I try and reinforce to my team is that really marketing done right is a sales support function. But I think that that your point about customer first is really the ethos that brings us all together and points us in the same direction. Yeah, I've seen just in my uh, observation from different companies that a lot of times one of the reasons why there's misalignment is lack of clarity on who owns what, right? Mm. Who's responsible for this function? And, you know, sales thinks it's sales, marketing thinks it's marketing or vice versa. And then it's like, let's all play together. We all have the same goals. We So kudos to y'all for really sounding like you're doing an amazing job of collaborating. And one other thing I would say is um, you got to be willing to change course, right? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, there's, we, we've sat in, we've sat in rooms for hours, Dave and I have, and we've, we thought we had it all figured out. We, we do something, we make a change, we, we, we pull out an ad and then all of a sudden we're like, no, nah, we, we need to, we need to tweak this and, and we need to hit the market again with a different message. So you have to be willing to, to change course if needed. Um, but once again, it does, it, it comes back to that collaboration yeah. piece is so important yeah. from a sales and marketing group. And having a bit of humility, I think that mm-hmm. we don't yeah. necessarily have all the answers and it's, you know, reaching across the aisle and making sure that we've got sort of everything considered. Now, how has the kind of outdoor uh, architectural or landscaping um, industry as a whole changed? Is it is this now more of a must-have for people in their homes, or is it is that trend going, or is it um, you know kind of a nice to have? Well, well, I think during during COVID, um, it changed a lot. I think uh, a lot of folks at home, you know, they would spend time in the out in in their backyard. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, when COVID happened, they had to spend time. It it wasn't, um, it wasn't a, maybe we will, it's, we have to, because we can't go anywhere. And we saw really boom. And and that's kind of why we, we changed our mantra on, on our outdoor living segment to live well outside. People feel better when they're outside, right? Um, you're healthier, you feel good. So we, we've kind of gone all in and what we're trying to do is we want to be a family of brands that play in the, in the backyard and be able to, you know, from the pool finish all the way to the fence when you're done, we want to be able to play in that space. So are there some things that are, are, uh, that we can look forward to maybe trends that are upcoming that people, homeowners can, uh, you know, either aspire to get or start thinking about putting into their household budget when it comes to outdoor elements? Yeah, so we offer a lot of elements in the outdoor. We'll do we do everything from kitchens. Um, you know, we we can do the art forms kitchen packages, mm-hmm. which are really popular right now. But but I really don't think the products have changed much overall. Uh, you know, when you look at your outside, is you think about a nice deck, a fire pit, a swimming pool, an outdoor kitchen. We've played in those spaces for several years, but we're being a little bit more intentional today on kind of how we talk about those products. And make sure that customers know that, hey, these are available in your market. And um, it's just a matter of picking and choosing what your backyard wants to look like. Mm-hmm. And we help with design as well at, 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 through our Belgar business. So, um, y- you know, we, we're all in. And if people go to the website, oldcastleapg.com, they can see and they can pull up the Belgar um, side of our business and really see what we offer from, from that backyard solution. Are you doing commercial spaces as well? We do. We're we're heavily involved in. I'll let Dave talk about the HGTV. We're uh, the dream home. We're we're heavily involved in that program every year, which is phenomenal. Um, so you I can, if you watch HGTV, you'll definitely see our commercials there. Um, on that side of the business as well. Has so, has that changed kind of people's expectations? Like those type of uh, shows where they see like, oh, this is out this is possible now why can't i have one yeah and all you got to do is you got to figure out what you want and make sure it works in your budget (laughs) and the good news is 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 we've got um we've got you can get a nice backyard upgrade what you have now for five thousand dollars right or you can go out and spend 
two hundred thousand dollars. Right, you can spend as much as you want. I'm sure yes. <laughs> you can spend as much as you want. So, so that's the thing. We 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 appeal to all all right. sides of that. Um, and and we've got products that that we make that will um work in in each, you know, each segment of of whatever your budget might be. Yeah, that's a very cool brand partnership with HGTV. I'm mm-hmm. sure. Oh, it is. It's it, it's been long standing, and it's great, and our customers love it, and and it does. It 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 shows the possibilities of mm-hmm. what you can do outside. Um, understanding you know that there's budget constraints sure. um, for everybody, but we can we can hit each bucket and and get them something really nice that that works. For do you them. get to go to the dream home every year when they? They do their HGTV mm. dream home. <laughs> we we do. Yeah, we're heavily involved in the dream home um um stuff and and our 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 president Tim Ortman and and Jenny Nail, our um chief revenue officer, they're heavily involved in in those as well. So it's a team effort um on kind of our marketing side and and what we talk about on a daily basis to live well outside. So what is an element you've seen somewhere that you were like, "Oh, I didn't even I couldn't imagine something like this." Like what's kind of the most, I don't want to say outlandish, but maybe most extravagant outdoor. You know, I, I, mm-hmm. I actually don't think that it's extravagance so much as the transformation element of seeing someone's backyard, you know, as it was torn down to the studs and then rebuilt into something that is completely different. Um, that is what gets me really excited personally is that potential for change and how much you can do with the space that you have. Cause we, we all know that, you know, housing markets real tough right now. So people are not buying their way into these upgrades. You kind of have to build with what you've got. But I think the fact that you can take a boring, basic builder grade backyard and really turn it into an oasis using a combination of all of our products is really powerful and exciting to see out in the world. Because you see sometimes like in a hotel or you travel and you see a resort kind of experience outdoors and all of a sudden now you're seeing some backyards that are having kind of some of the elements that were only in like high end. Absolutely. I think. Oh, it's, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Some of the stuff that we see because we, you know, we, we do our, our, obviously we do our Belgar catalogs every year and things like that. And we get submissions in and, and some of these backyards, outlandish is a good word to use. They're crazy. I mean, we see everything from, you know, full kitchens, um, you know, pools, slides. I mean, really the sky's the limit. And um, and a lot of folks, you know, they're, I mean, that's a living space anymore. Right. You know, where years ago it wasn't a living space. Um, you know, over the last few years, you know, we've changed that. We're like, hey, I've got this backyard, so that's an extra room. So right. that's the way they, we look at Right. So they've kind of, in their mind, they've reframed what their backyard could be, where it was like grass and a swing set maybe. And now it's, a, like you said, it's another room. This is more square footage for my house to make it more valuable and more, yep. um, you know, better for me currently and for the future owners if I sell this. Sure, absolutely, and it's more livable. And people, obviously, you know, w- with what's going on with interest rates and and how and home prices, people are saying, "Hey, I could do this and move and spend this much money, or I could invest in my property right. and and make it nicer for for me and for my kids." And and we see that, and that's the most exciting part about uh, being part of a progressive company is we have all these products, and we do we we. You know, we want to own the backyard and we want our contractors and customers really to be able to come to us and then we can provide a solution so they don't have to go to 10 different vendors right. to, to accomplish what they want to accomplish in their backyard. This is what I aspire to in my backyard. <laughs> we can help. I told you we can help. Well, it's also you're helping them think bigger. You know, they might not even know what's possible, but you're sure. giving them an idea of what could be. And then, like you said, there you can take baby steps to get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Belgard.com, there's a lot of stuff on that. So if, if people want to start at least looking at what, you know, kind of the well, possibility. Getting it out of, getting out of <laughs> Pinterest mode, out of inspiration and actually trying to put some bones around that. Like, hey, this is what I could theoretically achieve. Yes. So, as, right, as she writes mm-hmm. down Belgard.com. <laughs> There you go. Um, yeah. So tell us a little bit again. You're based here in Sandy Spring. Mm-hmm. What are some examples in the area, some success stories that we could potentially see in our community here? Oh, it, it's kind of funny you say that. So, um, you know, Georgia Masonry Supply is our local business here. 
and we've got block paver and dry mix plants over. Um, just a couple jobs that that you would probably see us at is the the Sandy Springs uh, Sandy Spring City Center. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were heavily involved in that. The Abernuth. Nathy Greenway, mm-hmm. we we've got hardscape products there, and then right now we're doing the Sandy Sandy Springs uh, Police Headquarters. Oh, um, that's okay. actually under construction, and then not to mention the hundreds or thousands of backyards that yeah, sure. that are around our community right now that have product going in. Um, you know, it's funny. I was talking to somebody this morning, and I was talking to Ann Carlson, and she's in our office this morning, and she's like. Yeah, because she lives in Sandy Springs, and she's she was out for a walk, and she sees Belgar pavers and Sacrete on her walk every week. She sees a house that that's doing a certain project. So it, you'll see our a lot of folks they use our products every single day, and they just don't realize it. Um, so that's yeah. And I'm still at the point where I get excited when I'm like, oh look, that's our block. And my <laughs> uh, my wife's about tired of hearing about it, but it's still exciting to to see our stuff out in the wild. I think I, I love to see it. You know, um, we, I was in Salt Lake City um, several weeks ago, and I was at a stoplight, and there was a whole um, truckload of sackcrete next to me that somebody had just picked up, and I just got picture? the pic- <laughs> yeah, we, I took a picture. Yeah. I was sitting at a stoplight, so I <laughs> safely took a picture. But it's exciting when you see your products out there right. making a difference, and and customers are are raving about our quality and our service, and that's really that's why that's what we did for. That, yeah. That's why I've been here for thirty years, and if they if they keep me around, I'll be here mm-hmm. for another. I guess until they tell me to <laughs> tell me to leave. And it's one of those things where everybody is um, happy around your product, like mm-hmm. w- when they're done. They're, they got something they're proud of, so it must be rewarding work for you. you know? Oh, absolutely. It is rewarding. I mean, you know, that's the ultimate goal. During the construction phase, there's a lot of hard work. Obviously, our, we, we always joke our products aren't real sexy on the sacrete side mm-hmm. of the business, but but our sacrete products are useful in everything that, that we build in the backyard, from the fence to the repair, um, you know, the, the port walkways. Yeah, I mean, port you know. walkways. So, But when you get to the final end of that, um, end of that journey on your project, you can look at it and you can be really proud of kind of what we help create. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, and so once again, what are the best websites coordinates for someone to plug in? I uh, start with oldcastleapg.com and you'll be able to access all the other brand sites from there, from Belgard to Moisture Shield decking to Sacre to Pebble Tech pool finishes and everything in between. But yep, and old Cat- fencing, Brett fencing business, you um, you, everything you can you can get from that website. Absolutely, um, one stop shop. You got it. That's one the idea. One stop shop. There you go. <laughs> and Rachel, before we wrap, any uh, LinkedIn tip? Uh, yeah, well, not as much of a tip as uh, something a new kid on the block. Um, so LinkedIn uh, May first rolled out games. I don't know if you've noticed it. There's three games they rolled out. Um, So now if you're on your home screen, kind of underneath where the news is on the right-hand column, you'll see the games there. Um, I think it's kind of interesting. I'm not sure why they feel like LinkedIn users want to play games on there. Um, Sometimes I think it's time on site. They want want time on site. They do. More time on site. I will be honest. The games are... Not the most fun to play. Um, <laughs> there's not a Wordle in there. There's not a Wordle. There is nope. like a... There's no Minesweeper. Like, oh my God. Nice. I wish. Right? Um, Bring back Minesweeper. I, yeah, they should have totally... <laughs> I, I used to be addicted to that game. Um, so, you know, test them out. See what you think. I've, I'm not sure they're getting the play that they were hoping because you can kind of see how many of your connections are playing them. And mine is generally around yeah. like 10 to 15 and I have a lot more than that. Right. So I just don't, I don't know. Sometimes it's just an example of they roll out features that may not be what the user wants, <laughs> but check it out. See what you think. Let me know. Absolutely. Well, uh, thank you both for being part of the show today. You're both doing such important work and we appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you for much. having us. We, we really appreciate being here. All right. Lee Cantor for Rachel Simon. We'll see you all next time on Sandy Springs Business Radio.